Oh, good lord. L just look at what's going on on screen right now. This is Netflix's newest animated movie. This is Thelma the Unicorn. And it's a weird movie. I've got to be honest. I'm still currently going through my adventures of 2024, trying to practically see every animated movie there is. I'm doing my best to keep up with every trailer and, of course, all things from every studio, at least on the Western front. And that leads me to watching a movie like this, which is very much not aimed towards me, to say the least. Now, we did actually cover the initial trailer for this movie a little while back. And even back then, I have kind of the same vibes. Now, it's just a weird looking unicorn movie, you know? But it's not just a product of complete new origins. Of course not, it's a big studio. They're never gonna do an original movie. What are you talking about? This is of course another children's book adaptation. And now that it's been put into the big screen turned streaming, they've made some interesting creative choices along the way. This movie on its surface has a very obvious and simple theme that is obviously aiming for a younger audience, whereby you've got to be yourself to really, you know, be true to yourself. Don't worry about success and being fake. Be yourself. Standard, classic, you've heard it before. We've done all sorts of terrible movies in the past with that exact same theming. And if you were to look at this movie and all of the shuffle shots going on in the background, you can probably piece together generally what's going on. If you were to pitch the entire idea of a concept for a story of this movie, you've got it all there. Pony becomes glitterized, is a unicorn, pretends to be somebody they're not, gets success, gets ousted for being actually just a pony, and then succeeds at the end anyway, being true to themselves instead. Through and through, this movie is not original. The fact that this is based off of a well-received children's book means it's obviously going to be a pretty decent story, but don't expect anything to really be breaking the boundaries in any sort of direction. For that alone, I wouldn't rank this like a five star story, maybe not even a four star to be honest. From what I can tell from the rest of the internet, a lot of people do adore this movie because it doesn't do anything outright badly. You know what I'm saying? It's just mid in that it does something very simplistic very, very well. And hey, that's valid. Sure, it's aged for a younger generation. They haven't seen this story a thousand times over like I have. But what is interesting is the fact that the original child's book by Aaron Blabay is noticeably small, right? So the actual adaptation to making this a full theatrical 90 minute experience allows for a lot of gaps to be put in. And the gaps that they chose to fill in were interesting to say the least. I don't know if you could already tell by some of the visuals you've seen like two minutes into this video so far, but this movie is kind of ugly. Like, it, it's creepy. A lot of the jokes and the styles when it's not being a fart or a poop joke is legitimately like, oh look, this over-the-top parasocial fan has stitched pony limbs to their body because they're such a super fan. And it's, it's kind of gross. I also reckon there's a whole lot of um, pejorative language in the way they display certain peoples. There is an over-the-top redneck driver that I guess is just going for the dumb Texan vibe. Meanwhile, the superfan has a strong Germanic stereotypical voice. And the fact that they're middle-aged makes me think this is meant to be a hit towards bronies, you know? Considering this movie is having that pony unicorn aesthetic, it makes sense that maybe they kept an eye on the fact that there'd be a My Little Pony demographic following them. And then they just spat in their faces because weird and creepy people is kind of the point of their humor. I mean, look at the manager. Like, do I need to say any more? There's even a sequence where his head gets pushed into the tarmac and his teeth bend forwards over the tarmac. Like, I'm... It's gross. <laughs> but also, I kind of get it from an artistic perspective. When you look at some of the initial illustrations from the original children's book, yeah, they're kind of ugly. So that's the point. I kind of get the vibe they're going for here. I don't think I like the looks of practically any of the humans in this movie. To some degree, they are either looking creepy or they act creepy and it's really... Like, a lot of people have like tired sections shaved off of their head or they're all balding. I don't know. It's an artistic choice, sure. Maybe the fact that I'm saying, oh, look at them, they're so ugly, is specifically going against the theme of the movie of don't worry about your looks because you need to be true to yourself. But even still, weird, right? And of course, on the other elements of filling in the gaps of this superstar social media influencer musician story, there is also, of course, this big sort of push for the influencer side of Hollywood. And I guess like considering it's like the number one dream of the younger demographic, it's leading towards that. But again, it does it in a lot of ways that I guess is both truthful in the fact that everything's fake, but also in, again, a very pejorative way. 
There is a point where we meet like another musician horse superstar who's known for being a stupid guy who vomits up his own food. And like, why? I don't think that's in the book. Why is there a extended sequence about a guy vomiting up his own food again? It's like insulting in every direction because that's the style of comedy. It's so strange. Whilst at the same time, the one thing that they're like, oh, be true to yourself, you gotta make sure, you know, you don't worry about your ugliness, is on this pony character, who looks still incredibly nice. They just have brown and white fur instead of pink and glitter, you know? Like, like they don't even look bad as a pony. They are like the most, I don't want to say attractive character, because that's a whole rabbit hole when referring to ponies and humans. But like, in their ugly form, they're not even ugly. I, this is the classic, like, oh look, they're so ugly, and visually they're not, the moment they're put onto the big screen story. I've done this, I've mentioned that I've mentioned this multiple times over like, my old Ugly Dolls terrible review. They're not ugly there. Maybe they need glasses. Woof. And real quick, thank you for making halfway through this video. As per usual, do add to the discussion if you have thoughts on this movie yourself over on our Discord server or on the YouTube comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I shall let you get back to the rest of this video as I whack myself in the eye with a prop I was playing with. Back to the rest of Thelma the Unicorn. And it's strange because the theme, of course, makes sense. It's all very simple. And there's all sorts of fun fakeness about Hollywood. The manager is this over-the-top illumination villain ripoff. The the rival musician Narwhal is really interesting in the fact that they can only move in water, so they constantly have all of these like water gushes. There's a lot of I say this a lot as well. A lot of really good quality animation. It's just like some of the managerial decisions around these kind of movies are so baffling to me, honestly. But I can also totally understand where they're coming from. When you're given a prompt that is, hey, simple, successful children's book about being true to yourself, fill in the gaps, hey, let's make it successful as well, since we are a big studio and others have done it before, it makes sense that you can see basically every human in this is an illumination character. Look at them. Oh, clearly they are. And going for that illumination minion vibe with the strange slapstick, maybe a bit of Hotel Transylvania body physics, makes a lot of sense for entertaining children in an overstimulating kind of way, whilst you've then also got animals singing. So get that sing vibe in there, you know? It, it works. Don't ask how any of these hooved characters can strum specific notes on a guitar or hold the drumsticks in the first place. <laughs> That's been an issue for the ages since horses have been told in story form. But I get it. You can see the inspirations around this movie in order to make it as successful as possible. And if you think about it too much, a lot of things start to break down. I love how it's never established or addressed that just all animals can speak in this universe, and that's not a surprise. It's really funny how the humans, when they first see the unicorn, are like, do you have any talents? She starts singing, and then immediately they're like, oh, okay. Wow, you're a singer. No one's like, oh, wow, she spoke in the first place. That's just how this world works. I kind of would have hoped a hint more would have been explained there, but it's not. How does vegetarianism work in this world? Do the people still eat meat? Is the drama of McDonald's burgers having horse meat in them even more dramatic nowadays? Like, I've got so many questions about the world. But the book, again, is probably only like 30 pages max. Now, of course, taking this from an entirely different theme, when I actually started watching this movie, I had a way different interpretation that I was curious to see if they were going to expand on as much as it's... I mean, it's faintly kid-related. The pony doesn't feel like they can succeed because of their looks, right? That's the whole point. You have to be a looker in order to succeed in Hollywood. They Only when they looked like a sparkling unicorn were they successful. It had nothing to do with their real talents. They went to a talent show as a pony and then were immediately ostracized before they could even speak. The moment that the fans witnessed her singing for the first time, she was a unicorn and they adored her music. They adored her brand and, you know, they went on to sell all sorts of stuff like perfume and music videos with the vomiting horse guy. And I thought that could have been an interesting direction of how she has all this passion and talent to be a successful musician, but the actual element of her talent being relevant or irrelevant is irrelevant. The fact that she is a non-supposedly visually appealing pony coming from a working class background and so can't succeed in the industry is an interesting direction for a story you could have told here. And the fact that she was only successful when she had that middle class aesthetic and the, you know, the riches and the branding and the monetization to make things, was she a success regardless of talent, could have gone somewhere. The fact that she is later on ousted as only a pony and not a unicorn, 
and then towards the end she just sings anyway and comes back and makes a reappearance and everyone loves her is kind of like a non-number. I would have loved to have seen how audience would have responded to her without the unicorn vibes based solely on talent. From this, it seems like they just blindly accept her because they already know her for the Thalma branding, right? But it would have been genuinely interesting to learn a little bit more about is she actually talented and successful or is it only the brand? Like, like I feel like there could have been something more of an adult-ish spin to spin on this that would have been slightly interesting. But it really is just, hey, she's pretty, so now she succeeds, and then it gets taken away from her, and she becomes true to herself. It's so simple-minded, and that's, I guess, valid. Sometimes kids' movies can be simplistic. Maybe I'm just a spoiled brat for enjoying kids' animated movies that do feel like they can go into further depth. This is just an adaptation from a short book. Fine. But again, I won't be putting it as a top tier movie of this year because it just doesn't do much. The animation and the visuals are brilliant, with a Netflix budgeting and all sorts of cast putting in a lot of real talent and animation prowess and voice performance. I genuinely do kind of love the manager character. He seems like a lot of fun. But as ironic as it seems, being a story all about the corporatism of marketing and Hollywood, this just feels like a corporate movie. Based off of a book to make the story a little easier, filling in the gaps with copying other people and a whole lot of kind of gross cringe jokes, which is kind of the style. Makes sense thematically to the visuals of the book, but it's, it's not really my thing. Though considering I am a 27 year old man, look at this movie. It's clearly not built for me. Oh yeah, also this is a musical. It's all right. None of the songs particularly stuck to me in an amazing way, but I'm not a lyricist. I guess we'll just have to see if one of these songs becomes a TikTok sound to linger afterwards, like the Disney Encanto treatment. I doubt it though. It's simplistic, unapologetic, and very, very weird. With a lot of sleaze and a lot of backhanded compliments all across the board. If you need a movie purely as a distraction to pass the time that we spend in our lives, Thelma the Unicorn does a decent enough job. Against the waves and waves of kids' animated movies that are coming out over the years, this it's just another drop in the ocean, but at least it didn't come from the sewers. And that's my thoughts on Thelma the Unicorn, so I'll end it off there. For now, my name's been Daz. Thank you very much for reaching the very end of this video. Do let us know your thoughts in a discussion on the YouTube comments or over on our Discord, and I shall see you in a little bit.